All right, just going to do a video refuting the Calvinistic, Calvinistic twisting of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, and how ripping it out of context to prove basically that man has no free will in the context of salvation. So let's actually look at the verse, because like I said, Calvin is like using verse 3 of 1 Peter chapter 1 and take it out of context to prove that mankind has no free will in regards to salvation. So let's look at the verse, then read it in context. So 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, like I said, they take this verse out of context. Now let's actually look at the verse in context because that's what needs to be addressed. Because any cult will base doctrine off obscure verses ripped out of context. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So there's a, point, a couple points I want to make about this. This is referring to the eternal security of the believer. Verse 3 talks about being begotten unto a lively hope, and it needs to be read in light of verses 4 and 5, which show that we have a place in heaven reserved for us that does not fade away, and that we are kept by the power of God. Okay, It's talking about eternal security. Now compare this again with Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. For whom he, for whom he did foresaw, for no... He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Okay, now, again, when God saves you, he begot, he be, he's begotten you unto a lively hope, because you have, when you have Jesus Christ, when he saves you, he keeps you saved. And for more evidence on this, John chapter 10 verse 27 to uh, 30. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 30. My sheep, hear my, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And of course, John chapter 6, verse 35 to 40 is another good text showing eternal security. John chapter 6, verse uh, 35 to 40. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I, came not, for I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all, all, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which, which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up again. I will raise him up at the last day. So what's going on in first in uh, verse three of First Peter chapter one? This is not saying that God chooses who gets saved or God gives you grants you the act of believing. It's not at all what it's saying. It's simply referring to the eternal security of the believer. How when you're saved, okay, God has begotten you into a lively hope. You are going to heaven. God saves you. He keeps you saved. That's all that it's saying. But you see, Calvinists like to take these verses out of context to prove, to attempt to prove that man has no free will in the context of salvation. Why? Because like I said, Calvinism is a cult. That's what every single cult does. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. This is yet another one of their verses they like to use uh, and twist and rip out of context, just like any you know false religion does. Uh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.